Welcome back to the Eastern Plains of Colorado here on McCaffrey Farms. Welcome to the video. Let's get to it. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to like the video if you enjoy it. And be sure to ring the bell icon. That'll notify you when I post my videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But let's get to the video. First, what we're going to do, we're going to dress that. And then this tire, I believe. We got two ramps. We're gonna put them either in front or behind that tire and that tire. And we're either gonna pull it up, back it up, gonna drop those off. The two tires up here on the wing, cause one of these, this one, it's only been used to unfold maybe three or four times. That was the one that blew out when I was bringing this home after we finished up. Once we take those off, we'll put those two on. We'll go get these two new tires put those on the other two spots and that way we basically have four brand new tires on the transports and then that way hopefully we don't blow any tires while going down the road with this and then from there might try and pick up some of our seat today go to fairbanks which is in brush get some of the stuff to do all of this plumb those tanks in and then also here soon today's monday Wednesday, Dad and I might be going on a bit of a trip to pick a few things up as another upgrade for this planter. So subscribe to the channel, ring that bell icon. That way you don't miss that video when it comes out. Now that our monitor shut up. Uh, we did get those ramps put down, so now we're going to pull ahead and then we'll start working on getting those wheels off. So we did lower the uh, wing wheels down a touch to hopefully make it a little easier to get them off. And now we're going to go get those off, take the flat tires off, and then we'll go get them fixed. So on the two that are on the ramps, we also had to put the wing locks in, lowered them, so then that sucked these up. But now they're up off the ground and we can start changing them. We did get these two tires off got the first wing wheel off dad's about to get the second one on so we'll move these ones out of the way and then we'll bring those over get them put back on here and that way we can set it down and get it the way it's supposed to be and not sitting on two of these tires that are also halfway bad got our two new tires got them mounted we didn't take time to get the one off the drills we can always do that once we get corn planted and actually need to uh use those but we're gonna set those off, get a few other things, and we're gonna see if we can go get the corn seed from the one place, and then maybe run a few other errands, get other parts for them, some of the fertilizer part, a few other things for the tractor and drills. Hopefully we can, because all the seeds should just fit on the back of the pickup. I think it's only 53 bags is what we need. Not too terribly much. Like I said, hopefully we can go get it from there. We can at least get the stuff ordered for those tanks. If the place doesn't have it, then that way we're not waiting on it as long because the seven inches of snow that we got, yes, it had a lot of moisture, but we needed moisture and it kind of soaked into the ground fairly fast and it's all drying out somewhat quickly. We are forecast a little bit more moisture today or tonight and Wednesday night and today's Monday. So we might get more moisture, we might not. And if we don't, it's gonna be even that much sooner time we can start planting our corn. So we need to be buttoning this up and getting it done. So that way when we can, we can go out and get that corn planted as soon as we can and get it done and start transitioning it over to back to Milo and get that ready because we're gonna have a ton of Milo that we need to get in pretty quick too. I got these set here, like said, we got all the tires we need on the transports. That's where we need it most because right now it's folded up. We did get an O-ring that we believe will work over here. Whenever day we can get back to working on this, we can replace it. Hopefully that'll solve that hydraulic oil leak and then we can get it unfolded and start running everything we need to. Hopefully 
those fertilizer stands that I did a video on us about us going and getting them. Hopefully we'll, those will be getting done soon and then we can get those put on the planter, start taking some of the old stuff off. We don't have too terribly much to take off. And from there, we can start running the new lines and everything that we need to get those tanks hooked up. And then that'll be a majority of what we have to do. The rest will be along the lines of just switching out the plates to corn plates. A few of the seed knockers, which I'll show you later, once we get to taking those apart and putting those corn plates in, we had to buy some new ones of those because the old corn ones were, uh, they were kind of messed up. A few of them were anyways. So we got, I think we ordered five and then we ordered a few extra closing wheels. And then I was thinking there's one other thing. But like I said right now, try and take one of these off and then um, we'll take one of these in to the one place we go. See if they can get them because they've been getting some John Deere parts. We need 50 of them because it's 50 foot drill, 12 inch spacing. So we need to redo those before we plant any feed. Once we get one of those off, that'll be all we need. And if we can go get our seed, then we can make the trip up there. Got the point taken off. We got just took one of the end ones off for now. Um, as you can see, uh, we needed to do it because it was starting to wear a hole there in the bottom and that would not be good. We kind of figured we might have let them go a little too long. That hole's not too terrible, so some of them look better than this. So hopefully there's not too terribly big of holes in some of these. Because if that gets too big and it starts running into the, the point where the pin goes through and holds these on, it would not be good to have those wear down. Because then these might not go on as good when you put new ones on. Alright, we just got back. Uh, we got the corn seed. And we did get whole bunch of fittings first can i go check the cows once i get back first i'll unload the seed get it in the shed because it's supposed to snow tonight but i'll get that in and then i'll kind of clean a spot out in here and then i'm gonna lay everything out that i can figure out how we want to do it and then that way we can make sure we need what we need because we are gonna have to go back the one valve we got we were trying to make it simple on ourselves so we got a three-way valve thinking we'd be able to fill it and tie both the tanks on the tractor and the tank on the planter together with one valve but it's not gonna end up working the way the three-way valve works. So we already have to take a few things back. I think we kind of overthought it. So I'm gonna bring everything in here, lay it out the way we'll put it on to the certain spot. And then from there, we'll have more of a visual idea of what we need and what we can take back. And then tomorrow morning, we'll go back, take back what we can and then get the last few parts we need. Then from there, we can put it all together and call it good. Clarky, the forklift is started. I think it's, I don't know if you guys can tell. I think it's kind of starting to snow, but we need to move this old girl. Just pull her next to the tractor and planter for now. I'll back the red Ford in once I get this moved and then be able to unload that seed and get everything laid out the way we need to and see what all can work and what won't. This is, I believe there's 53 bags of decalb 5120. It was one that we quoted on in the circle we're planting it on where we rotated it out of corn last year and put Milo on it. We don't need the fancy rootworm protection and everything else on it. So I think this is just kind of basic Roundup Ready corn without all the extra stuff to where if it had been in corn for the last five years. So that helped it be a little cheaper too and a little more available, about 130-ish acres. Hopefully we can get some good good corn. Prices are pretty decent for corn right now. I know that's, that's kind of why we are planting corn this year is the prices are higher for it. Hopefully we can get some good yield and a decent price. That would be nice, wouldn't it? All right, so now need to come up here open this so we can drop this down and then that allows us to move this we'll put that right there this is a little bit of a lift for our forklift but it's done it so far All right. 
right, we got it off. That's the best place I can think to set it for now. But I'll pull some of this stuff out. This is the hosing that will run from the tanks on the tractor back to the planter. And then we have some smaller 3 8 hosing right here. So the other stuff we got 30 feet of two inch suction hose, 300 foot of this 3 8 hosing. This will be what we use to run from the actual fertilizer monitor deals that we got. Those things over there, we refer to them as red balls. That's what will run from there to the rows and actually apply the fertilizer. And this is our box of fittings and everything we need to lay out and see what we actually need and don't need. So now I have everything. I'm gonna pull this out, bring the tractor back around, plug it back in. Then that way I can have the space heater going, get it warmer in here, make it a little nicer to work in here and start laying that stuff out. This is where I should have just left this tractor running. I didn't know exactly how long everything in there was going to take me. So I should have just left it run, but she's a good old girl. Won't bother her too much. Probably should have just left it running. So, got this back, so grab this cord, plug it back in. That way, Dad ends up needing it anytime soon. It'll at least have a little bit more motivation to start. I'm gonna shut this door and get that blue space heater going. And then hopefully, it'll be a lot nicer to work in here and uh, won't be quite as cold. It didn't connect. Darn it. That's gonna be much better. Space heater isn't too loud. I'll just try and talk a little louder. But for now, laying everything out, I'm mostly gonna focus on the fittings and then just leave a little bit of gap where we'll put that hosing. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on making sure what fittings we need, which ones will work. This is the valve I was talking about. I it's not going to work the way we wanted it to. And our thought was we'd be able to fill from here and hit both directions filling. So this would go to the uh, tank on the planter and then this would run forward to the tractor. But the way it works, we wouldn't be able to do all three of those things. So that's not going to work. We're going to have to take that back. And then a few of these fittings in here few of the other fittings where we got because we did this so we're gonna have to change that but that's why I'm gonna lay everything out we'll know exactly what we need to make it work and have a lot better idea on what we need so for right now I most likely will not be doing anything with this will not be cutting any of it definitely won't be doing anything with that 3 8 hosing yet but for now most likely I'm just gonna be working with all the fittings and now I just set down all the hose clamps we need for that. And that there should be good enough. Now it'll be running it towards the back and figuring out how we need to set 
set everything up to connect it and make it work right. I think I got it set kind of right. So I'll show you. This is what it looks like. This will go from left tank. There'll be hosing to here. Same from right tank. It'll go there, tie into there. Then we'll run hosing back to this valve. The reason we'll have a valve there is because we'll have to detach and retach it at each time we fold and unfold. So we want a valve there to be able to shut it. That way it'll hold, if there's still a little bit of fertilizer in the front tanks, uh, we'll have a way to hold it back and not leak any. We have a plug for it to go into there for when we are transporting down the road. And then if we have enough hosing, we're just gonna do it to where this will be the end where we detach and retach it. And then this will be the start of another T right here. So in that way we can fill from this side and then attach to the tanks on the tractor from here. And then that will go to the planter where we could then run to the tank on the planter and run into the fertilizer system. So looking at this, we got a lot of extra parts. Like I said, we got there, we overthought it. When dad gets back, I'll show him this. From there, we'll draw it down on paper make sure we have everything right we should only need that valve because then to stop the flow to direct it to the front when filling there's already that valve on the planter so we won't need a valve on this side because there's already one there welcome back it's a few days later from the last uh stuff i did i believe it was with the fertilizer stuff update have everything we got bigger valves for under these tanks since they're the wrong size that we need. But we're gonna try and get these tires put back on and unfold it. Uh, we talked to the one person that helps us with this planter. Some. It is a pressure valve. In order to change it, you have to let it down and let all the pressure off of the hydraulics and then you can screw it out and change it from there. So we're gonna try and put these two new tires on get the tires back on the wings and then try and see if we can change that but if you could see or not we have some people here with the grain back semi gonna use our tractor that's empty but we're gonna use our tractor um they're buying that grain the old corn that's in there like 275 a bushel roughly 2500 bushels is what we're thinking but they're gonna buy the grain, get it out of there, and that way we can uh, get those bins cleaned up, work on them a little bit, and then hopefully uh, get back to using them, get them sealed up and everything and working right. But I need to get WD-40 to put those hubs back on, and then from there, uh, get the tires put back on. I think I got everything tightened up on that first tire. Um, Looks good, so now I'm gonna pull planter up off of that ramp, move it behind the other tire, go do the same on that and get that one wrapped up too. All right, so I got this first one put on and I'm in the process of getting this one on. And I needed to look for the bolts that go in and hold that on. I couldn't figure out where they were. I looked over by the red Ford where we had been doing everything, couldn't find them, couldn't find them. And I looked all over for those two stinking bolts and just was not finding them. And I came to this one tire that we switched and started looking around. And then I found them. I don't know why I put them there. Luckily, I didn't too, move too much. I just moved from the ramps to there. Don't know why I put them there. Glad they stayed there though, especially since I pulled right up to a mud hole. But hey, I found my bolts. I'll get that one on and then we'll probably call it a video. Okay, I got both tires put on. So now I'm gonna back it out, pull it around where we kept it uh, last year when we kind of worked on it afterwards and then unfold it that way it'll be ready. They're still getting grain out, um, working on that. Dad's in there helping them while I did this stuff. So I'll just unfold it, get it ready for when we want to change that seal and call it good. 